there's three ways to legally avoid tax. Let me ask you this. Do you know what your biggest expense is? Because you know a lot of people say to me, well, it's my mortgage, car payments, or food, or rent. Sorry, but they're all wrong. Way wrong. Like if you don't know the answer to this question, this is why you need to watch this entire video. Because your single biggest expense is not your kids, it's not your husband, it's not your wife. It's your tax. So if you are employed, you cannot do anything about your tax bill. You cannot get your tax bill down without illegal activity, without going to prison. It is physically impossible. Why? Because they take it before you get it. You do your 40, 50, 60 hours a week, and then you get your pay slip. And you're like, oh yeah, I earned five grand this month. And then you received 2,800. Nearly half of it is gone. So when you are employed, also known in the UK as PAYE or pay as you earn, you cannot legally get your tax down, but tax is your biggest expense. So what do people start to do? They start to look for schemes and scams. The tax system, by the way, is almost as high as it was in the late 70s, early 80s. It is outrageously high. For anyone who earns a decent amount of money, in reality, you're paying 65 to 70% tax in what you earn and then what you spend. And by the way, look at it properly. Because a lot of people are like, oh no, I only pay 35% tax, I pay 40, I pay 45. No, you don't. There's VAT that you have to add on, so you use 20% on your prices. The corp tax has gone up to 25% and it will go up more. Income tax is 45%. Uh, and that's, by the way, just gone on a lower threshold now. Then you've got pension contributions, which you're forced to pay. And I don't like paying into state pensions. I think it's a, a waste of money because the state pension pot has been dipped into by the government and there's not enough money in the state pension pot. So I regard that as a tax. National insurance. You can call it what you want, government. Oh, let's call it national insurance. Let's call it this levy. They call me help. They call me Stacey. They call me help. It's just stealth taxes. They're all fucking taxes. And then when you buy stuff, you pay taxes on what you buy. So you know when you buy fuel, you're double or triple taxed. Um, and the food that you buy and the products and the services usually have VAT and other taxes inbuilt into it. So when you add all of that in, you should be fucking angry. I'm always angry. Because you are paying 60 to 70% in tax. And most of it, by the way, is stealth. I.e. you don't know. But when you are employed in PAYE, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to bend over and pull your pants down and take it and receive it, no matter how much it hurts. But there are three main legal ways to avoid tax. Let's get straight into this. Number one, you have to own a business, run a company, be an entrepreneur, have a side hustle. Number two, running a home office. This is one of them. I am sat in it. And number three, uh, what's called subsistence. Owning a company. The only way that you can pay tax last and pay yourself first is by owning a company or having a side hustle. When you're employed, you pay tax first and you pay yourself last. So even if you're employed, you can still start a side hustle. You can start a company. You can build a membership site. You can launch a YouTube channel and earn money from it. You can turn your content into cash flow. You can have a podcast with sponsors and advertisers. So fundamentally as a concept, start a side hustle, form a company, register on company's house in the UK, get a domain name, set up a payment gateway or merchant, and all of a sudden you are an entrepreneur and you pay yourself first and pay tax last. You, res you have to charge VAT once you're above the threshold. There's other taxes in other countries, but even with VAT in the UK, you have to add it on once you're above the threshold. It's 20%, and, and, but you get to keep it for a few months as cash flow and earn interest on it before you pay it to them. Whereas when you're employed, it all comes straight off the top and you've got nothing left. I've got nothing left. Next thing is corp tax. You pay corp tax once a year. Now you pay your income tax every six months and you pay some on account, which I think is a bit of a scam, paying some in advance, even though you haven't um, earned it yet necessarily. But you know, the governments are doing their best to get taxing in real time. But right now as an entrepreneur, you pay tax delayed. You have that every three months. You corp tax every year, your income tax every six months. So it gives you time to work that tax down and also, you run a company, you pay your VAT later, you pay your income tax later, you pay your corp tax later, and there's still some tax breaks. There's still a decent amount of tax breaks, and I'm going to talk about some of them here. So there's capital allowances. They used to be easier. They're a bit harder, but capital allowances are tax breaks against buying commercial property. You've got entrepreneurs relief. It used to be on 10 million, and now it's on 1 million, 10% tax on the sale of a business. You've got the home office. So this Shure SM7B, these two laptops, these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine phones, this Sony camera, these lights, these lights, 
all this equipment in this studio, the pod track four, the chair, the desk, this is all a business expense. You've got subsistence where if there's travel, accommodation, food and general expenses of work, you can run those through. Whenever you travel for work, you can claim the travel. So you can claim the, either the, the mileage or the fuel or you can claim um, the food, the train fare, the flights, the accommodation. So here's a quick tip. Obviously, you can't claim holidays back as a business expense. But if you take a trip abroad and part, most or all of that is for work, you know, you might go and do some viewings if you're in property or you might have some business meetings or some mentoring. So when I travel abroad, abroad, I often do speaker boot camps or I do mentoring. And those elements of that trip, including the flights, accommodation and food, are offsetable as a business expense against the company. So you can actually convert part, most or all of your holidays into business expenses. You can convert part, most or all of your travel into business expenses. But only if you own a company. And here's the thing. Here's what will happen. The economy will get so bad. And by the way, it's going to get worse. We're going to move into a depression. I believe that to be a fact. So what will happen is they'll take all your tax breaks away. They'll leave you with just a few. The governments right now across the world seem to think that the only way to generate revenue is to tax you. They don't get that giving entrepreneurs incentives and tax breaks and support will grow the economy more than charging tax. Because if they charge more tax, in the short term, they'll pull in more money. But in the long term, people will leave the country. People will avoid or evade tax. The economy will shrink and then it will have a um, vicious cycle, reverse effect for what they achieve, uh, trying to achieve. There's something called the Laffer Curve. Looks like this, it looks like a mound. And if they charge zero tax, they get zero tax. But if they charge 100% tax, they get zero tax. Why would they get zero tax if they charge 100% tax? Because no one would pay it, because no one could afford to live. And the Laffer Curve goes up like that, whereby there's an optimum amount. And it's not 50% and it's not 70% and it's not 80%. The government don't freaking get it. So the optimum might be 22% or 25%. It's an optimum where we willingly pay it and we don't avoid it or evade it or leave the country. Coming soon to a town near you is going to be a big recession and a big depression. It's going to get worse first, but then it will get better. Because in the end, everything will be so fucked, they'll have to incentivize you to start a business and grow the economy. And that's what happens. The incentives get bigger, the incentives get smaller. The incentives get bigger, the incentives get smaller. And right now, they've shrunk, but I believe they'll increase soon. They have to. All right, quick summary then. Um, the three main ways to legally avoid tax are one, owning a company. So you pay tax last, not first, and you can run offsetable expenses and get your tax bill down. Two, run a home office. Anyone can do that. As long as you've got a company, you can have a, a, a recording studio and an office and all the equipment in it. And then three is subsistence, travel, accommodation, food and fuel towards the travel and accommodation for work. These are the three most simple, most common, accessible to the average person. So let me know what you think about this in the comments. I hope you found the content useful. The more you learn, the more you earn. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.